Welcome back to the RevitKid.com. Um, in this last, in the last episode of our our Studio Topo tutorial, um, we scale down this picture. And you can see lock proportions. We scale down the picture to um, to match the scale of our drawing by using this little scale in the corner. <clears throat> like I said, it's not very accurate. Um, probably not even accurate at all. But it's really close enough to the to the um, to the point that you would need for a design studio project. So now I'm just gonna do a little a little uh, a little part of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna topo out for you so you guys kind of understand it. Now for my for my project, we actually used this area right here that I'm circling. So I'll just topo out that part. And what it is is you can see um, this up here is actually 95, and this is uh, Interstate 95, and down in the corner is uh, railroad tracks, the Metro North railroad track. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna um, topo this out a little bit. If you look down. We have some contour lines. We have 30, 40, 50, so they're going in 10, 10 increments, 10 foot elevation, and then I believe these are supposed to be two feet in between. So we have two, one, two, three, four. Um, so topo. So let's go down to site, and we're going to create a topo surface. So if any of you have any type of surveying experience, what this does is, um, if you click topo, it's another sketch command. So you'll see this all changes in the corner and we have points and then there's an elevation now you can import them you can simplify the surface and there's the properties to it this is an absolute elevation you can create uh, project elevations I believe or I, I think they actually use uh, different datums but <clears throat> what the topo does is every point you create on on one elevation it, it saves the data and then when you create another point it actually triangulates in between them and for any of you with surveying background you know that that's basically how it's Topo map is made. The project, the Revit just does it for you. So I'm going to start with my 50 foot line. So I click 50 foot on the top because that's where the elevation is going to be. <clears throat> and now all I'm going to do is click and follow my 50 foot line. Like I said, it's not very accurate, but it's it's perfect for the project you need. Now, if you notice this white in the background, sort of filling it up. That is the um, that is the surface being created. I'll put the color on so you can see. It's actually brown. That's actually the surface being created. Now you can see I'm just following and following. And all I'm doing is I'm going to follow this 50 foot line. And now you want to be um, during different curves, like tighter curves, you want to be you want to have a lot of dots. But during the longer ones, you don't until it gets really close. And and you'll 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 the more you use it, the more you realize how many dots you're going to need in certain areas. And, and you'll see how they react to each other. But all I'm doing is I'm just following this line real quick. So I'll follow this line up here. And you'll see it created a, a, little, a little topo. <clears throat> and what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to put it on wireframe for right now, just so I can see the rest. And now I'm going to go to the 40 foot line. So I'm going to type up here. I'm going to type 40 foot. And I'm just going to follow this line. And now you can see all these lines being created. There's a ton, tons of lines being created now. And what Revit is doing is it's actually showing the topography in two foot increments. So depending on how accurate I am to this line, you'll see the lines are actually very close to the contour lines drawn. So if I follow the 40, just follow it through, follow it through, you can see the contour lines getting a little tighter. Now you can see them getting very tight. Okay. So now if I turn my shading back on, you can see all the contour lines. It's, it's starting to make a contour map for you. <clears throat> so now let me just do one more, and then I'll go in 3D and show you what happens. So now I'm going to do 30 feet. So we're dropping down a little bit. Now I'm just going to follow. Like I said, the more points, the more smooth it's going to be. Um, but it just depends on what you need and what, what you want for the, uh, for the topo. I'm just being very rough right now. It's for time. So let me follow 30, it goes down to this ravine. <clears throat> so 30 is going out here, we'll just keep clicking. Okay, so now if I go into my shading, you can see we've got all these surfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the properties real quick. So if I click properties, you can change the material. So I'm going to just change the material to, right now it's, uh, I believe it's earth, uh, dirt. Or site dirt, <clears throat> site earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it to site grass and click OK, click OK, and now you'll see it's green. 
So let me finish the surface, and it created this topo. So now if I go in 3D, you can see I actually have a nice topo map. And it is perfectly um, perfectly accurate to what to what I had. So let me just cut a section just so you can see. I'll go into the site, basics, section. Double click that. And now you can see I have a section and it builds the earth, it cuts it, and you can see that that's my 10 foot increments drawing my topo. Very cool, very powerful. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm actually going to show you how to place a building into this topo. Um, so I'll uh, see you then.